All right, guys, welcome to How's It Made. We have a Harbor Freight six inch bench buff buffer, and we're going to take it apart and see what processes were used to make it and if there's any manufacturing inefficiencies or glaring design flaws that could have been done better. go so the only thing holding that on was just the press fit <clears throat> of the bearing to the shaft a little corroded so didn't want to come off but that just looks like a normal shielded shielded bearing possibly sealed but looks like it's just shielded and this piece this is really light, almost feels like it's made out of styrofoam, it's so light. So I'm going to guess it's definitely a die casting process that made, made this piece itself. And uh, I'm going to guess zinc, zinc or maybe a magnesium alloy, but uh, pretty light, pretty chintzy see the overspray from the from the coating that's really all there is to that bearing pressed into a die cast cheap metal piece <clears throat> and then be, you can kind of see what went wrong with this one you got a little overheated <laughs> and, uh, that's the the rotor, oh, yep, there's the melted end cap of some kind. Probably the uh, compound that held the, the wire. They put like a, a glue type compound on the end of the coils to uh, just to hold them in place. It looks like that melted completely off and all kinds of bad stuff happened. So, this right here is kind of what the insides of every cheap, cheap brushless motor looks like, or brush motors, excuse me. And uh, this is, looks like a formed and uh, either resistance, probably resistance welded formed by uh, uh, die, die clamps and then spot welded, not spot welded, but probably an automated machine comes in and, and resistance welds that. Um, so, all right, so in order to get that off, we're gonna need to come from back here. I guess we can take the switch off. The switch looks like a traditional sheet metal stamping. Basically the same process for decades, uh, probably centuries at this point. Yep, that's a that's sheet metal coated. Plastic injection molded switch assembly. I'm not going to try and get that out of there, but a separate injection molded piece, separate injection molded piece, and then these are some stamped metal contacts, contacts that are um, most likely molded over, put in the mold, and the plastic actually shot around them. If I could get inside there, I'd know for sure. It's possible these are just pressed in after the fact, but it's really common for metal contacts to be over molded inside of their their plastic housing, just for both combined uh, manufacturing steps so that 
uh, a laborer doesn't have to push them in after the fact. And it, uh, depending if it's a watertight housing, that molding in seals them the one side of the contact that's molded in. So you don't have to worry about water. So that's pretty basic. <clears throat> All that details included in the metal stamping. All right, let's get into the rest of this. So you can see this is pretty flimsy. That's definitely plastic and most likely injection molded based on the size. Thin flat pieces like this can, can be uh, made, out of made out of plastic in a variety of different ways. There's uh, vacuum forming and uh, just uh, extruded sheet <clears throat> with a stamping process to put the holes in it. But normally you don't waste those kind of processes on anything but big, very large flat plastic pieces because injection molding is so cost effective. Until you get up to very big, very big parts. Yeah, obviously injection molded. You can see the injection gate right there. And then all these little holes right here are where ejector pins come and eject it out of the tool. And yeah, some, these are just rubber, rubber isolators. Probably, uh, no, considering that it's Harbor Freight brand or quality, <clears throat> they're probably uh, a thermoplastic elastomer, which basically all that means is that it can be shot in the same machine that hard plastic is made in. It can be melted and then injected into a mold, so you don't have to have special machines. The same machine that made this probably made this squishy rubber piece and that's why the <coughs> cheaper brands and cheaper products will use thermoplastic elastomers because uh, they don't need special special equipment and then you get into higher uh, higher end products and they'll switch to a, a vulcanized rubber that's what's in your your street tires and uh, uh, industrial isolators on big equipment they'll be made out of uh, Natural, natural or synthetic rubber that uh, that takes a less efficient process, uh, takes more time and more more labor, but you come out with a part that can't melt. Like you can see, this one's pretty well gone. So you can use the same machine as this to make this, but you don't get as good of properties. And so this pretty much shows everything that's left. This is a relay uh, and the back side of the motor housing. And this piece, it's heavy enough and hard enough that it feels like it's metal. Uh, let's see. Yep. That's metal and it's, it's pretty bulky. And there would be no point in put, attaching a ground to something that's made out of plastic. So as far as this piece, I would say that this piece is sand casted given the surface finish and the overall lack of refinement of the features. You can make intricate stuff with sand casting, but um, it takes a lot of effort. This uh, normally sand casting is a little bit higher end of a process than what you would expect something from Harbor Freight to be made with. Die casting is what I would expect expect this to be, but the, that that rough surface finish is really indicative of, of sand casting. Um, so. That's, that's what I'm going to go with for that. So, and then there's some little odds and ends in, left that I didn't go over how it's made. You know, there's another piece of sheet metal. Um, there's another uh, plastic, hard plastic injection molded piece. 
Um, the wire, it's not too glamorous to talk about, but it's it's probably pultruded um, with the the shielding on it, uh, basically on a on a conveyor line that's pulling the wires, and then the uh, molten rubber or uh, probably PVC is what most wire shielding is is kind of melted around it just like a hot glue gun and the wires are extruded out with it <clears throat> so as far as improvements well the biggest improvement probably would be in the quality quality of the uh, electrical components itself which is why this thing failed um, of course I'm a I'm a mechanical engineer, so I don't know a whole lot about how that would be improved. I mean, it does seem to have been a heat failure. So um, this right here that melted and let uh, <clears throat> let the windings come undone, that's, uh, that's not too hard to fix. You just use a, a polymer with a higher melting compound or a, a higher melting point. Um, but... I imagine the reason it was making so so much heat um, is because, <coughs> excuse me, the duty cycle of of uh, this motor is probably pretty low because it's cheap, and so it got hotter than it's really designed for. Uh, but good quality motors have a higher duty cycle and can can handle uh, more mechanical energy without producing excess heat. Uh, that's you know they have higher efficiency less of their less of the power is turned into wasted heat and that's probably what would happen what would have saved this motor is just to have have a better quality <coughs> components electrical components in there um, as far as mechanical improvements I mean it's a it's definitely a cheap cheap piece um, if I was going to make it more efficiently without improving the quality just try to get the uh, the cost for the manufacturer down. I would probably start with this piece right here, this casting, which again looks like it's sand casted, uh, which is not the cheapest process. It's labor intensive. You don't get to reuse the mold. Um, <clears throat> so I'd probably turn that into an injection molding. And you might say, well, why, why would you want injection molding that makes flimsy stuff like this to be the mount for this piece? Well, <laughs> you can get a lot more complicated than this. A, you don't have to use an ABS or polyethylene, you know, plastic, Walmart bag plastic like this is made out of. You can use... <clears throat> Uh, Glass-filled nylon is a common, uh, inexpensive, but very rigid, very durable material. Uh, and of course, you can put a bunch, of, a bunch of ribs in this piece. If this piece was made out of plastic and not sand casted, you can put ribs all along it and also cross ribs. Um, core, out, core out some places for your electronics to go. And then... <clears throat> the cost per unit, I would imagine, would be cut in half, taking that go, going from sand casting to an injection mold. At, especially at quantities, it would probably be even more. So if they sold a million of these, um, and so they're already set up, so they got a lot of that sunk cost already in it. If they switch to a, a plastic injection molded piece for this, uh, at the same quantities and the same you know, they've already paid for tooling and everything. I would imagine it would be more like a quarter of the price per piece, just for this piece, not the, not the whole thing. All right. Well, there you have it. That is um, my uh, manufacturing dissection of a Harbor Freight 6-inch bench buffer. And this has been How's It Made.